So a few weeks ago in the Bad Batch, we saw a debate in the Imperial Senate where they discussed an ongoing military campaign being carried out by the Galactic Empire, and I figured today we could take a closer look at exactly what that military campaign was and who they were fighting. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. So, the Empire was fighting a war basically from the moment the Clone Wars ended, almost all the way up until the start of the Galactic Civil War, and those wars kind of meshed together, and I figured today we'll take a closer look at this particular period of Imperial history and their ongoing battle against Separatist holdouts. Now, I've actually discussed Separatist holdouts on the channel in the past, but I really want to focus on the war between the Galactic Empire and the Separatist holdouts, and what each side was sort of going for, and what the fighting actually would have looked like. Because we haven't actually seen much of this on screen. We've seen little bits here and there, but that's really it. So let's start with the basic question. Who are the Separatist holdouts? Well, their name basically says it all. They're former members of the Confederacy of Independent Systems who are still standing up for the ideals of the CIS, even after the CIS formally capitulated to the Republic slash Empire at the end of the Clone Wars. They may or may not still be using old Separatist military hardware, but one way or another they're holding up Separatist ideals, and many are even still claiming to fight for the CIS. And obviously their adversaries are the Galactic Empire, a successor state to the Galactic Republic that they were fighting during the war. So what exactly did these battles look like? Well, the wars fought between the Separatist holdouts and the Empire were varied and unique. Some of these, in fact a lot of these Separatist holdouts, didn't use battle droids. You see, we're all familiar with the, the massive battles of the Clone Wars, where you see clone troopers fighting against battle droids and the sort of normal military equipment of both factions, but the truth is that was only a portion of the Clone Wars. A big part of the Clone Wars were battles between people. Different species who maybe sided with one side of the war or sided with the other, uh, fighting against one another, and when the battle droids received their shutdown orders, yes, the main body of the CIS's military stopped functioning, but the people who backed the CIS, many of whom had already taken up arms for the cause in defense of their own local systems, didn't stand down. Instead, the galaxy was full of small revolutions which saw the Galactic Empire as a successor to the Republic, which it absolutely was, and decided to just keep fighting. As a result, a vast majority of Separatist holdouts were not clone troopers versus battle droids, but instead clone troopers, or in the later years, stormtroopers, against local populations who still supported Separatist ideals. This is why, when we hear this conflict mentioned in the Imperial Senate, it's referring to conflicts in the Mid-Rim and the Outer Rim, areas that would have been under Separatist control, many of which were worlds that actually willingly sided with the Separatists during the conflict. Some of them broke away with the Separatists at the start of the war. And as we look at planets like Umbaro, where the local population stood up against the Republic, it's easy to imagine that local populations and local governments may not be quite as quick to accept the surrender of the CIS as other CIS commanders who were commanding battle droids who had simply shut down. That being said, there are a few Separatist holdouts who did have access to old CIS military hardware. Now, it's likely that 99% of the battle droids received the shutdown order and did effectively shut down, but it's also possible that local governments who were loyal to the Separatists who had battle droids and the command equipment on their planet could simply reactivate the droids with a simple activation code and continue using them for their own purposes, maybe even reprogram entire Separatist armies to serve the planet instead of the CIS. As a result, we do see a few worlds, like what we saw early on in this season of The Bad Batch, that actually do have Separatist military equipment still on them and still actively fighting against the Galactic Empire. So some of the fighting we see with the Separatist holdouts is certainly very similar to the Clone Wars fighting, where you have battle droids versus clone troopers, but a lot of it really was clone troopers versus local populations. And by the way, the Separatist holdouts became a really, really good scapegoat for the Galactic Empire. Any problems within the early days of the Empire, any turbulence and any open revolts against the new Imperial rule could simply be sort of pinned on the Separatists. You could say, for example, that, oh, these people that are actively opposing the rise of the Galactic Empire are simply supporting the Separatists and not actually, you know, objecting to the Empire. 
All that being said, at the end of the day, the battles between the Galactic Empire and the Separatist holdouts were a hallmark of this era of Star Wars storytelling. It was a really big part of the formative years of the Galactic Empire when they saw their biggest threat as the remnants of the CIS. And, well, that fighting did start to die down a few years after the end of the Clone Wars, there were still a handful of Separatist sympathizers and holdouts that kept fighting all the way up to the rise of the Rebellion and the start of the Galactic Civil War. A war that started with a particular battle, the Battle of Scarif, and if you'd like to learn more about the Battle of Scarif and how it played out, I'll leave a link up here to a video I have all about that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think it makes sense for the Separatist holdouts to fight individually. Do you think it's understandable that each one kind of tried to hold its own resistance against the Galactic Empire, or do you think it would make more sense for them to band together to form almost a new CIS and take on the Empire that way? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.